Welcome back. We're doing the amateur extra license exam study. We're on video number 41. We're on the back hill of this thing now. And this is still talking about digital. We're going to get through it. Why are received spread spectrum signals resistant to interference? That is because spread spectrum signals not using the spread spe spectrum algorithm are suppressed in the receiver. Spread spectrum takes your signal and spreads it out. And there are two main ways that you spread these out. And it goes, uh, there's a sequential and then there's a pseudo random. Now, pseudo random means that it's sort of random. It's not quite random, it is predetermined uh, in the receiver and the transmitter. So, sp receive spread spectrum signals, they're resistant to interference because whatever interference, the signals just don't make it through because they're not part of it. So what spread spectrum communications technique uses a high speed binary bit stream to shift the phase of an RF carrier? And this is a direct sequence. So the binary bit stream is a direct sequence. This is the one that goes in order. Which describes spe spread spectrum frequency hopping. Now this is the one that hops around. It's a pseudo-random sequence, so it rapidly varies the frequency of a transmitted signal according to a pseudo-random sequence. Pseudo means sorta, and random, of, it, random is random. You know, if you were to roll dice, that's random. Pseudo-random is if you know what the order is coming, but it looks random. What is the primary effect of extremely short rise or fall time on a CW signal? The primary effect is the generation of key clicks. And remember that those key clicks, like we saw in the previous video with Alan W2AEW's video on the same, the same uh, YouTube app, is uh, he showed the gener that generation of key clicks can happen with a... a short rise or fall time. If you have that quick keying, then you're going to have key clicks, which is noise, and that takes up bandwidth. What is the most common method of reducing key clicks? Again, going back to Alan's video, increasing the keying waveform rise and fall times. So you're more modeling a sine wave, though not pure, a sine wave then that that is going to decrease the amount of bandwidth that you take up. If you notice on your screen, if you have one and you have a key or you can hold two wires together on your digital radio that has, has a screen, click it really fast and then click and hold. Supposedly, the pure sine wave has almost has no bandwidth. It's it's counterintuitive, and if you Google all that, you might find where I read that somewhere. Uh, the sine wave itself doesn't take up any bandwidth. So in, increasing the keying waveform rise and fall times is a way to reduce those key clicks. What is the advantage of including parity bits in ASCII characters? Now, if you've never looked at an ASCII chart, they're pretty interesting. And if you add parity, then some types of errors can be detected. Not all errors, but some errors. So I, I got some, uh, some, some examples here. This one by far was the best. And you have a sequence of seven bits, and that is your ASCII. The last bit, or your eighth bit, can either be an even parity or an odd parity. So now you know some of those settings that you have when you're trying to communicate with a radio, they're detecting errors when you have an even or odd parity. If you notice for even parity, if there are two bits that are true, then even parity is gonna give you a zero at the end. 
An odd parity is going to give you a 1 at the end. Look at this one where there's only one true bit. E even parity is going to give you an odd number because now there's an odd number. And odd parity is backwards. So it's if there's only one, then it's going to give you an even if there's only one. So back to the question, some types of errors can be detected. What is a common cause of overmodulation in AFSK signals? I have been told this. Uh, somebody was 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 communicating. I was chasing a parks on the air. They messaged me on Twitter, and I'm glad they did. the The AF on my radio, the audio coming into the radio from the computer was just too hot, so it was causing my bandwidth to be way too wide because I was having overmodulation and it was causing distortion. So what parameter evaluates distortion of an AFSK signal caused by excessive input audio levels? And that is intermodulation distortion. And that is not a good thing, not a good thing. So what I did is I went and I looked at my AF monitor and I adjusted the incoming audio and got it inside of the pig pen so it didn't peak outside of the pig pen. Uh, that, that reduced it, the signal width of my, uh, I don't remember if it was PSK. It was something that, that he definitely knew what the bandwidth was supposed to be. And then I fixed it and it was much better after that. What is considered an acceptable maximum IMD level for an idling PSK signal? And that is negative 30 decibels. And you can go read about the role of IMD, intermodulation distortion, based on uh, PSK. And you can just see that uh, idling around negative 30 decibels is a good report. If it is around 20 or 10, that is awful. Do I know what that means? Heck no. What are some of the differences between the Bado digital code and ASCII? So I'll tell you that Bado only uses five data bits per character and ASCII uses seven. So Bado uses two characters as letters and figure shift codes. ASCII has none. So let's go take a look at this. I uh, think this is it. The Bado code, there's the five bits for Bado. There is a figure shift and a letter shift that is sent prior to one of these to tell you which side it goes. So that's my assumption. Check this out. Here's the ASCII. And you can send so much more with ASCII because it has more binary code to it. And one of the advantages of that is in, in the ASCII, you can send uppercase and lowercase, whereas in Bado, it's only uppercase. Oh, look, that's the next question. How about that? So five data bits, seven data bits. Bado has two characters for your letter and figure shift codes. ASCII does not have that. So ASCII has, has more room for more characters. What is one advantage of using ASCII code for data transmission? Oh my goodness, I just did this. Uh, it's uh, possible to transmit both uppercase and lowercase text if you're using ASCII characters, ASCII code. Okay, we're done with the digital junk. We're done with all of that magical theory. There were a lot of sections on this. So have fun with the study. Do your best. Take a practice test. You know, there's some great websites out there where you can take practice tests. Maybe one day I'll make my own and add it to the ham test trivia site. Uh, not right now. Not my goal. But hey. Come on back. We got about nine more. I think it gets easier after this. I think. If, if I think I know what's coming up, it gets easier. The rest of this should be a piece of cake. 
All right. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm W1RCP73.